name is Cody. So I'm going to get to the truck in a second here, but I just want to go over what I'm going to be doing in the next couple seconds. I'm going to be replacing the fuel filter first on this truck. Um, I bought return lines. I, I'm going to be doing an oil, oil change as well, but I just want to get this thing up and running again so I can bring it further into the garage and just have closer access to my tools and whatnot. Before I start wrenching on the truck, let me show you what I found in the fuel filter. It's pretty bad. So if you've been following along with this restoration project, you know that the interior was a complete disaster. And this is just more evidence that the guy did not keep up on maintenance on this truck. I mean, you can see the bottom of this filter here. Me and a family member took this off. And rust, junk, you name it, it's at the bottom of this filter housing. So this is a two-piece filter. You screw this at the bottom here. And then this will obviously go to the fuel filter housing. And you can see the junk that this has picked up. I mean, you know the color of diesel, anyone who owns a diesel truck. That is not diesel. So two things. Either this has just been sitting at the bottom of the filter with zero maintenance and the water and fuel light never came on, it's either broken or something, or I'm sucking this crap up from the tank and I got bigger issues ahead of me. So I just gotta do some more investigating, but right now, I got another fuel filter. It's made in China, so I know it's high quality. And if I need to put another one on, they're only 30 to some dollars. All right, got this all cleaned up. Looks a lot better. Have the O-ring in place. Just came with the filter. Have a little bit of oil laying there. All right, so the fuel filter's on, and I'm gonna see if I can get this thing to start. If I can, I'm gonna bring it into the garage a little bit more. Here we are, I'm at the truck. This is a, oh, what is it, 9 sixteenths? No, three quarter for anyone who cares. Now I think the IDI has roughly 10 quarts of oil in it. So I don't think the oil's been changed in a long time, you guys, but it looks like regular diesel engine oils. Looks like a magnet here, let's check it out. I'm not seeing anything. I think it's a healthy motor, guys. It sounds healthy, it rides, excuse me, drives healthy. It's just all around a good truck. I think the chassis might have high miles on it, so to say, but I mean, I think for what it is, it's a really good engine. So a couple days have passed since I did the oil change. I wanted to check the fuel filter and just see how much fuel uh, is getting put in through the lift pump. I wanted to see if the lift pump was strong enough. And when I took that filter off, the fluid was all the way to the top. So that's a good sign. I ended up crushing that fuel filter accidentally when I took it off. So I had to get a new 30 some dollar fuel filter. Kind of a bummer, but lesson learned. Um, now I'm gonna pull the truck into the garage again and I'm gonna go show you guys what the recurring problem is. And uh, I think I have a solution to it, one sec. able to do that consistently for about a week now and so let me take off this air cleaner and show you guys what I'm, I'm thinking is wrong here all right guys so I'm gonna get you the best lighting that I can if there's some shadows in the way I apologize well I'm gonna start off by taking off this air cleaner it's pretty obvious another thing guys before I get started I wanted to show you what I found in the fuel filter now like I said I had to remove this filter because I wanted to see if the lift pump was put enough fuel in it so it wasn't just sucking air and could keep up with the system. It was, and this is what I poured out of it. That diesel fuel in those tanks is just so old. I mean, you guys know what diesel fuel looks like. So it's a little brown. There's some dirt in there. 
probably from wiping stuff off with rags and stuff. But the reason I wanted to start with return lines is just get the simple, cheap things out of the way first. If that bad fuel made it through this filter into the injection pump, more than likely it's fried. And that's why I'm not able to get this thing out of first gear driving down the road. It's a possibility. Not really likely because these standardine rotary pumps are pretty tough. But that's worst case scenario. I, I just want to throw that in the mix as well. So again, I'm going to take these injector lines off. I'm going to show you what I'm doing with it. And we'll just go from there, guys. All right, so for starters, I'm just gonna crack these injector lines open. These are 5 8 size for anyone who cares. There we go. So how this works for anyone who's curious is there's a hole here in this injector that spits out the fuel that's not burnt up or used and there's two O-rings sealing it, top and bottom. And that's what that cap seals over, and the excess, flu, <clears throat> the excess fuel will go down these return lines to wherever they need to go, back to the tank, up to this fuel filter housing, wherever, and that's how it operates, pretty simple. It's basically a street legal tractor, guys. It's a pretty cool system. All right, so there's one half. That's what it looks like. You can see the color difference just from the diesel fuel soaking this hose for who knows how long. Definitely time to be replaced. So I guess this is just a separate, a spacer of some sort. So all of them are off. And this is the driver's side, that's the passenger side, obviously, with the longer hose. But before I go any further, I wanted to go show you what this kit included. I got this off eBay for 30 bucks. There's better kits out there. You can tell me in the comments how your kit is better than mine, that's fine. But it comes with these injector cups and everything you'd need to put them back on the clamps, the O-rings, and there's copper washers in here. Those copper washers are for the injectors to uh, seat and seal against the head of the engine there. I'm not gonna take these injectors out. They're not leaking, they're fine. If it's not broke, I'm not gonna try and fix it. I got enough on my mind here. This is gonna take a while, guys, so you get the idea. I'm just, I'm taking a tape measure, measuring the distance between each injector cap, making sure I put both clamps on first, and then just moving on to the next one. I'm gonna skip ahead to where I'm finished. All right, so these new O-rings from the kit were soaked in a little bit of diesel fuel. Just gonna slide these over. All right, moment of truth, I suppose. Get these lined up here. And I should hear like an audible click when these come down. I made sure that these didn't have any burrs or rough plastic that would hurt those O-rings at all. So I went ahead and tightened all these injector lines down and I found a really big problem here. See that? I don't think that's supposed to happen. So either it's supposed to be like that, which there's no way. I mean, how's that even seal against the O-rings in there? Or it was just a terrible design and it's gonna run fine. Might as well just complete the job and see if it works. There's, <laughs> there's no way it's going to, but why not? Well, you guys, I guess I'm ready to run this truck, but I'm not really optimistic about it. I think I'm going to be leaking fuel from all eight injector cups because all eight of them are sliding up and down. Oh, 
Okay, I'm done for the day. I've had enough. There's a huge puddle of diesel now in my truck. That entire thing that I did tonight was for nothing and I got to start over and get the right parts. I don't know what else to say. I'm pretty frustrated. All right, so obviously it's a different day. Now, everything went wrong on these return lines. That's that's just what I get for buying parts off eBay thinking that it's going to be as good as factory parts. I guess I haven't learned my lesson from buying other diesel parts off Amazon and stuff and usually you get what you pay for. So, let me go over real quick what happened these ebay parts the, the caps were just too loose i mean so all return line kits are not made equal and i found that out the hard way but this is the kit that i got from amazon or excuse me autozone and this is a delphi kit it was roughly 45 bucks what i did was i just used my pinky finger and kind of pressed it on as far as i could and you kind of see there how far it goes up my finger whereas this this is the ebay kit See how far that goes? Definitely deeper than this one. So it's a lot tighter. The barbs are the same size. This might have a little bit bigger opening, but, and it's also maybe just slightly taller, but it's a tighter fit, which means it's gonna seal against those O-rings better. So I'm gonna put the new kit on off camera. It's the same process of what I just showed you and I'll show you the startup uh, when I'm ready. Well, the new return line is on, and you can see, guys, there is zero play in these new caps. There's an audible snap when, when uh, each cap went on. The injector lines went on fine. It's ready to be started up, see if it works. but it's still dying when you let off the accelerator so there's still some things to sort out I guess okay so you saw for yourself it just stalls out That's the second time I've been able to do it in 30 seconds here so it's a repeatable problem this has been going on for as long as I've owned the truck and now I'm gonna start the diagnosis here so first thing I want to check is this timing advanced solenoid now I've done this off camera I just want to show you guys that all three of them work I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but it is clicking. And then I put this clear vinyl tubing here on the return line. This line meets with the other injector lines that goes back to the tank. And I just want to check fuel flow, because last time I did this off camera, it didn't have a ton of fuel flow in. And then, this cold idle switch. That's working. All the solenoids are working, so that at least that's good. At least they're clicking and the light, the uh, test probe is lighting off each one of those uh, probes. Connector leads is what I meant to say. So now what I want to investigate, I don't really know how to explain it, so bear with me, but the cold timing advanced solenoid goes off until the engine is heated up and then it slowly turns off. So it should be at like 12, 11 volts or so and then slowly go down to zero volts when it's warmed up. Because it's no longer needed. The engine's warmed up, doesn't need to be advanced. So I haven't tested that yet, but I did notice that on my gauge cluster, I have noticed ever since I've owned the truck that my coolant gauge has been pegged out past the hot logo and the check engine light has stayed on now for my research there's two gauges here there's a, a unit for your gauge which is right here and then another one right here for your tent for your light so when i unplug this The needle goes all the way to cold and the 
engine light comes off when the truck is running. It's it's not right now because the truck's not on. But just to prove it to you, I'm gonna plug this sensor back in and go back to the truck and it should be past the hot, yeah. I obviously have a bad sensor, that's easy to tell. My guess is that it grounds itself to the block and it just has that one power lead going to that small probe. So I got a replacement here. I don't know if that the sensor has anything to do with the cold time and advanced solenoid. Um, in modern cars it probably would because the engine or the, the system thinks that the engine's already hot so the cold time in advance can't do its job properly. Um, I don't think these trucks are so old that they're just dinosaurs. I don't think the truck is smart enough to realize that. But at the very least, I'll be able to fix this sensor here on my, on my gauge cluster and the gauge will work properly afterwards. Okay guys, so it's in the middle of your screen here and I'm sorry my hand's gonna be in the way the entire time. But I gotta do this quick so coolant doesn't go everywhere. For anyone who's wondering, it's a uh, 15 sixteenths. Maybe I should have done this when the cooling system wasn't pressurized. All right, so the new sensor's installed with that Teflon tape. There's no leaks, it's working good. And the temperature sensor works fine now, and the engine light hasn't been on, so that's fixed. Just started up off camera, and I'm still getting it to stall out, so that wasn't the main problem. So I'm gonna dive in deeper into this injection pump here. So I'm going to undo this harness here for the fuel shut off and cold time in advance. It's a pretty simple system guys. I'm, I've really enjoyed working on this truck. Even though it does have the problems it does, it's a lot of fun to work on. All right. See what we got here. It looks pretty standard. Has a little o-ring on there. Things are looking good in here. So I'm not seeing anything obvious here in this 90 degree elbow or check valve here. So I'm just going to thread it back in for now. And I'm just going to go ahead and take off the entire top cover. Only three screws, pretty easy. And that will get me better access. So yeah, like I said guys, just three screws here. And again, anyone who knows 7.3 IDIs knows these are just stupid, simple engines. There's not a whole lot that can go wrong on these things. Okay. There's the O-ring. So guys, I'm not gonna speak too soon. But it looks like this pump is in better shape than I thought. I was expecting it to be a lot worse. Well, there you have it, guys. You know, I was expecting, honestly, to see a bunch of glitter floating around in this injection pump. And it just looks real kind of rusty. So that's still not a good sign. But this is moving okay. It's a little gummy. clean finger here let me just rub this all up and down you kind of see that rust on my finger it's had a pretty bad fuel there there's a better shot so the fuel quality that this thing has ran has not been ideal um, it's had some pretty old diesel run through it that's for sure so both these solenoids look like they're in really good shape this o-ring might need to be replaced. I don't know where I'd source one, but everything on this top cover looks fine. This is moving real freely. Sounds real good. So, so at least the top cover is good to go. That's at least $100 in solenoids right there. Okay, so it's the next morning and I had soaked this in Marvel Mistra oil and I just got done sucking it out of the top here. It looks to be working pretty good. 
So I initially thought that this linkage was loose, like something was wrong with the springs. This seems to be moving fairly well. I think this fuel shutoff solenoid hook here rides rides right here on this little shelf and it'll kind of keep this back a little bit. Some people actually get it behind and can cause a runaway, so you want to always have it in front. But I think it keeps it, this linkage tight against this uh, plate here. Okay, putting some diesel back in here to kind of top it off. Okay. All right guys, so it's a little bit later. That None of that worked and so I had just turned off the camera and I was really getting ready to buy another injection pump. I thought this thing was toast. I thought there was internal damage somehow that I just couldn't see. And so that's why I turned off the camera. I was just done filming and I just, there's no use filming if you just know you're gonna have to take it out and put something else in there. So turns out the person off Craigslist that I was wanting to buy an injection pump from, I was kind of getting a quote from him. He just gave me some really good advice and said, hey, take some automatic transmission fluid, run it through your fuel filter, and turn the truck on and let that run for about 30 seconds to a minute. And what I did was I put a clear line on the return line off the injection pump there, and I could see when that turned bright red, I knew that the injection pump was full of that ATF, and then just let it sit for 24 hours. And he also said, buy some standardine fuel additive, put it in the fuel tanks, and I'll take care of the rest. And that's exactly what I did. And guys, it fixed the injection pump. I'm not getting a stalling issue. I'm gonna show you here in a second, take you on a test drive, but it's fixed. And it's just the craziest thing. I was honestly getting ready to spend four, five, six hundred dollars on a new injection pump, trying to find a used one if I could, just to save some money and save this project from going over budget. But guys, it's it runs amazing. I'm driving it nowadays. And of course, I'm sorry I didn't have it filmed. Uh, that's just how it goes sometimes on YouTube. I really thought I was gonna have to get a new injection pump. But in the meantime, I put in a, a second new battery here. So both these batteries are brand new, only like two months old. Uh, we're, we're, let me just show you. So what I got here is a uh, different hose on this injection return line. Everything's original on the injection pump. I didn't change a thing. All I did was just fill this fuel filter all the way. No diesel at all, just 16 ounces full of ATF fluid let it sit until that clear vinyl hose that I was using turned bright red and I just let it sit for 24 hours. So what I'm guessing is that there was a metering valve in here that had just had a little particulate of rust binding it up and that ATF fluid with all the detergents and lubricants just cleared that out and it runs great guys. Let me start it up and prove it to you. Here's the first run, the injection pump cleaned up. Let's see if it'll go. I think that was second right there. This tachometer isn't working right. I think the sensor's bad. It's gonna need to be swapped out. But it didn't stall on me, so that's great. Brakes are working good. Pedals not going to the, the brake pedals not going to the floor. Injection pump wants to stay alive. Can't get it to die. Well, there you have it guys. I thought I was gonna have to buy a five, $600 injection pump. Turns out it was just a little bit of ATF fluid and some fuel treatment, that's all it took. Also off camera, I did siphon out as much diesel as I could and put some fresh diesel in there. So it's only gonna run better from here. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Next week's video, 
I got some work to do on the radiator. There are two tiny little cracks. You can't even see it on camera. I'm gonna be soldering that and working on the transmission cooler that's leaking. Just general stuff that needs to be fixed. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.